iOS 16.1 and iOS 16.2 Beta 1 have been out for a few days, and there's even more new features, changes, and updates to talk about. So we'll talk about that, as well as the overall experience I'm having on my 14 Pro Max and other devices, iPhone 11 and iPad Pro, as well as the experience you're having with the latest updates based off the YouTube community poll, where there's over 19,000 votes at the time of this video and 377 comments. I've gone over all of the different comments to get the best understanding of the overall sort of experience experience with iOS 16.1 and 16.2 beta 1. Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and let's talk about what's new. Now the first thing has to do with shortcuts. If we go into shortcuts, within shortcuts if we create a new wallpaper or maybe a changer for that wallpaper, add an action and type in the word wallpaper. You'll see we have some new options here. We now have set wallpaper photo and switch between wallpapers. If we tap on set wallpaper photo, we can set de default wallpaper and select from our different lock screens. So we can select one to change all of the time and you have some different options here. If we close that, add an action, again add wallpaper, You'll see here, switch between wallpapers, it does the same sort of thing. So we can switch between any one of these and set our different wallpaper with different options and more. So it's great they've added this. They've had some features here for a while with wallpaper. Now it's sort of official, there's some extra options. Now when you're playing music and you're connected to a car through Bluetooth, there's actually a new icon on the lock screen with the music player. So if we go into photos, I took a photo of it, and you'll see here on my lock screen that I have a little car next to the music player when I took a screenshot. So that's something that just shows up that's a little bit new when you're playing music. And also you'll notice I have some icons here. These are actually real. I'll show you how to add those a little bit later on. I had those in the thumbnail of the video, and it's something you can actually use now with live activities. Now when music is the secondary icon at the top, so maybe we have an app that's open, so we'll go into one widget, that's how I actually set these. We'll hit start, swipe home, it's in the top, go to music, we'll hit play, let me turn the volume all the way down, then we'll swipe home, it becomes the secondary object in the dynamic island. You can see there it's completely filling up the secondary option with the album art. That didn't look like that in iOS 16.1. So if we set up the same thing here, you can see on iOS 16.1 on the left, 16.2 beta one on the right, the dynamic island, the secondary option here, when you open a secondary app, it's actually filling in the album artwork. That's something that's a little bit new. With 16.1 on the left, you can see the lossless icon looks a little bit different than 16.2 on the right. It's now a box that's filled in with sort of a translucent background as opposed to completely transparent before. Also something I have in this version is if we tap on the menu, you'll see I have the option to rate song. I know some people had this before, but now I have the option. I don't have it on 16.1. I do have it on 16.2 where I can rate the song right there from the menu. If you're using Private Relay, you have iCloud Plus or not, and you have Private Relay enabled, there's actually a new feature in Safari that shows up on different websites. So this has to be enabled first, and then if you go to Safari, Within Safari, if we tap on the options for a website, we now have an option that says turn off hide IP address. So if you have private relay enabled, you'll have this option. If you don't, this option doesn't show up at all. And that's something new in 16.2. Now, if you accidentally trigger emergency SOS, you press the side button five times or however you trigger it. So let's try that. You'll see it's triggered. It's counting down. If I tap stop, stop calling, and then I swipe home. We'll give it just a moment. I'll have to log back in. You'll see if we're on the lock screen and we swipe up, go into my notifications, I have one about emergency SOS. Tap on this and it can bring you into a survey for unintentional SOS calls. So you'll see it loaded. It said, did you intentionally trigger emergency SOS on your iPhone? And then you can choose options, send a system diagnostic and add attachments. So that's something that's new that shows up when you do that accidentally. It's just a nice way for them maybe to understand the sensors better overall. Now, if we swipe over and go to our widgets, you'll see in the upper right I have an all new sleep widget. This is something they added with 16.2. If we go to edit, then we go to our widgets, we'll add one. And if we go into sleep, we have two different options. We have one that says data and schedule, see how you slept and review your sleep schedule. And the other one says view your most recent sleep session, including sleep stages. And then you can add this widget. So it's an all new one. If we go into settings and then scroll down to Siri and search, you'll see there's an option under Siri responses that's all new.
you'll see it says prefer silent responses. This is not there in previous versions. As you can see here, we only had two options. Now we have prefer silent responses and it says Siri will respond silently except when you appear to be driving or using headphones with the screen off. So this could be updated in the future. I'm surprised this isn't part of automatic, but either way, it's a new option. If we go into weather and then go into the hourly forecast, you'll see we can scrub through hour by hour on 16.1. However, with 16.2, we can scrub through minute by minute. So this has been updated where you can fine tune the overall forecast. Now, whether or not this is super accurate is hard to say, but either way, you can go back and look at the data for the day. So you'll see here as I scrub through minute by minute. Also, if we go to maybe a different part of the forecast, scroll down, we'll go to the uh, sunny day here. The sun itself has actually been updated. You may or may not be able to see this. It's just more yellow than it was before. It was a little bit more orange with 16.1. Now it's slightly more yellow. That's a minor, minor change, but something that is in fact a little bit different. Also something that's very minor is if we go into notes, maybe we'll delete part of this note tap and swipe with three fingers. We have the undo option. Undo seems to be a little bit darker this time. It looks to be more black to fit in with the screen. Before it was more translucent. It's just a slight change. I've seen this completely different on different devices. So it depends. I'm curious if you're actually seeing that or not. Also to go along with Siri, tvOS 16.2 adds Siri voice recognition like that of the HomePod, where you can actually say, what's my schedule? And it will trigger and let you know what your schedule is opposed to someone else in your household. And that's something that's coming to Apple TV with tvOS 16.2. So we should see that in the near future once that releases to the public. Now, something I didn't mention in the initial iPadOS 16 or 16.1 what's new video is if you go into the weather app, and maybe we'll go scroll down here. The map's not showing, so that's a bit of a bug, but if we tap on the map, it shrinks to the side now, and it's not taking up the full screen. So that's something a little bit different that I just didn't mention before. It's a nice little change. You, could, of course, can make it full screen if you want, but it's not full screen unless you want it to be. So it's just giving you more information at a glance. Also with the release of iOS 16.1, they released a ton of different updates to apps. On the iPhone, we had different updates to support, to iMovie, iWork, pages, numbers, and keynote, clips, and more. So lots of different things. With the Mac, we had Final Cut Pro updates, motion, and compressor. So a lot of little updates. iWork updates with pages, numbers, and keynote were pretty major. So if we go into one of those, you'll see here, it was updated three days ago, and there's a lot of different changes here. So definitely worth updating if you use this. And if you're not familiar with this, this is basically a free version of Microsoft Word. Excel and PowerPoint. I would say the one that's best out of this is Keynote, which is actually better than PowerPoint in my opinion. All of the others are questionable depending on what you do with them. So Keynote though, if you wanna present something is definitely really nice and has the style that Apple includes in many of their apps. One of the things I wanted to share had to do with the live activity I had on the screen that allows you to go into different apps. You saw that in the thumbnail and it's actually something you can use from an app called One Widget. This isn't a sponsored video, but I just thought you'd like this app. And if we go to the last option here on the far right, you'll see it says Explore Dynamic Island. Go into that and you'll see that I have Launcher. Now you have the option for a pet around the Dynamic Island. I showed you that before with some other apps. You have Launcher, Sleeping and Health. You can add and remove any app you'd like. So if I wanna add an app, you'll see a bunch of different ones here. And I just picked a bunch of random ones. If I tap on Start, swipe up, we've got the home screen and the dynamic island at the top. If we go to the lock screen, we have our different apps. So if I tap on the app, it sort of runs through a shortcut. So we'll go to calculator, it runs through a shortcut and opens up the calculator. So it actually works, it's functional, and the same is true for any of these. So you could go into YouTube, do the same thing, and you'll see it brings us right into YouTube, although YouTube reloaded. You can also press and hold and see those in your dynamic island as well. So it's a really nice app. You do need to disable it though, and it will always stay there. So something that it's just kind of the limitations of what Apple allows in this, but it's pretty nice. And if you wanna have apps on your screen, you can definitely do that now. Apple this week also updated iCloud with beta.icloud.com. They fully redesigned it, as you can see here. And if you sign in, it has an all new look with all of your iCloud storage and more. So all of the things you normally see with iCloud.com, 
and you can see the different things here. They've just updated it. You can check it out yourself, beta.icloud.com, and they also launched a new security website for security research. So it's security.apple.com, and you can see more about it as you scroll down. So apply for an Apple security research device. If you're actually someone researching security, you can do that, submit bugs and more, or come work with them if you actually are good at finding bugs and finding sort of security holes in the OS. Now let's talk about the overall experience. And the first thing is iOS 15.7.1. This was expected, but also a little bit surprising. Apple continues to update older devices. And if you have 15.7 on your device, all the way up to the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, you can still install this if you're not already on iOS 16. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to downgrade. I mentioned that in the 15.7.1 What's New video, I tried to download the iPhone or downgrade the iPhone 10R and iPhone 11. I couldn't do it. I got an error message and it looks like Apple's not going to allow it. It may work with a third party app though, but I still have to test that. But it's just great to see them supporting older devices. And if we go into settings, we go into software update, you'll see here, this one's already updated. So it's great to see them support older devices. Now, as far as iOS 16.1, the overall experience, and I have it on this device here, the overall experience is pretty good for a lot of people. Better battery life by several hours for most, and a lot of people really are enjoying the battery percentage in the upper right. Some people aren't crazy about the design, but most people are appreciating that they brought it back. Also quite a few odd issues with the camera. So if you lock the screen, go to your home screen or lock screen, tap on it, go into your camera. When you activate the camera, sometimes you can't swipe out of it. I actually still experience that with 16.2 on this device. So it's still a glitch. It needs to be reported in feedback. But a lot of people are saying it's one of the best updates so far, but there is one major bug for a lot of people and it has to do with overall connectivity to Wi-Fi. A lot of people are seeing Wi-Fi drop over and over and reconnect and then disconnect. That's something Apple definitely needs to resolve going forward. So we could see a different update for that. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Also, some people are still having issues with AirPods. So with their AirPods, AirPods Pro, just disconnecting. This probably requires a firmware update from the latest AirPods. So hopefully we see that very soon. We haven't had an AirPods firmware update in a while, and many people have been experiencing that with AirPods Pro too. Hopefully we'll see them resolve that soon. As far as iOS 16.2, I've been using that full time on my main phone and over the past few days, it's pretty good. I have pretty good connectivity. I haven't had any drops. Wi-Fi is performing well for me. And in general, it's pretty stable. I really haven't noticed too many issues other than that one I mentioned as far as the camera getting stuck. Even swiping home where I mentioned I had that stutter many times over and over doesn't seem to be an issue. And typically that would happen when a song is playing and it goes into the dynamic island. It seems like Apple's fixed that swipe stutter that was happening over and over. Also, I had someone say that they did fix the issue with the flickering on the 14 series phones. Where the brightness is low, the dark areas would flicker. Most people have said that's been resolved. So I'd love to hear from you if you're still having it, but I've heard from quite a few that say it's actually fixed. As far as overall performance, ProMotion is super smooth and fast. On older devices, iPhone 11, iPhone 8, everything seems to be nice and smooth, whether that's 16.1 or 16.2. So you'll see as I swipe through, no real issues there. It seems to be fine. Let's go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks quick. Now, as you can see, the benchmarks have finished and on 16.1, it's actually a little bit better. 1,888 for single core versus 1,857 on 16.2. Again, the same is true for multi-core, 5,429 compared to 5,138. And that's not to say the update is necessarily bad, but after running it just a couple times, it seems to be up and down depending on when you run it. Typically after a few days, it usually improves and it seems about the same. So really I haven't noticed any problems, but I just wanted to share those as many people ask me to run that. As far as overall battery life, well, battery life for me, it's getting me through the day. And at the end of the day, I'll typically have about 30% left. If we go into settings, go down to battery, my battery health on this device is 100%. And if we go to the last 10 days, 
you'll see yesterday I only had two hours and three minutes of screen on time and nine hours and 10 minutes of idle time for some reason. I used over 60% of the battery or about 60%. Today, I had a little bit more usage, three hours and 52 minutes and then six hours and 14 minutes of idle time. Again, not great battery life. However, that's not the experience for most people. A couple people sent me in their battery life, so let's take a look. Now, Abhishek sent me in his battery life. This is on an 11 Pro Max with 95% battery health. He's running 16.1 and had four hours and 51 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 53 minutes of screen off time, and used about 40% of his battery. That's pretty typical for this device. Normally, you would expect about 11 or 12, maybe 13 hours of screen on time. Cameron sent in his battery life, and you can see here, this is from today. He took it off the charger at seven in the morning, and it, at 6 p.m. or 6.08 p.m., had five hours and 18 minutes of usage and only used about 40% of the battery life or so, maybe 35. That's phenomenal for the battery overall. So his is actually doing quite well as far as the active or always on display. It's hard to say if he's using that, but in general, that's pretty phenomenal battery life. And I'm hearing that from most people. Now, as far as the next version, like I mentioned, iOS 16.1 has some bugs with Wi-Fi that are well known. So I'm thinking we'll see an iOS 16.1.1 probably to address that before 16.2. We may not, but that's typically pretty likely if it's affecting a lot of people. So as far as when that should come out, I would expect that within the next few weeks. We don't have a specific date, but since we're so early in the betas with iOS 16.2, I would expect 16.1.1 within a couple weeks, with the next beta of iOS 16.2 probably in the second week of November. Usually early on, we skip every other week until we get to about beta 3 or 4. So that's what to expect. We may not have 16.2 until December at this point. That's usually Apple will have some sort of update in early December and then nothing again until January. So we'll have to wait and see what they do. But if there are some major bugs such as Wi-Fi, hopefully we'll have that updated. We're also waiting for satellite connectivity on the iPhone 14 devices. We haven't seen that yet, so hopefully we'll see that very soon. Maybe 16.2 will bring that when it's released. Now let's take a look at the YouTube community poll and some of your comments. You can see here at the time of this video, we have 19,000 votes and 9% of you are on 16.2 beta 1. 76% of you are on iOS 16.1, which makes a lot of sense. And 4% of you are still on 16.0.3. If you're on 16.0.3, I would highly recommend updating to 16.1 as most people say it's much better. 5% are on iOS 15.7 or older, and 5% are using Android. Now let's take a look at some of your comments. Stark said, using iOS 16.1, wish I never updated. My Wi-Fi keeps disconnecting and then connecting every few seconds. I tried resetting network settings and all the settings didn't work. Force restart also didn't work. So that's someone that's actually experiencing this problem. Although if you really are concerned about this and maybe you don't want to update, like I said before, but either way, I typically would update for security updates. Matrix Roland said it just came out for public beta testers today, still having the same issue left over from 16.1. With 16.2 beta one, I noticed you can't swipe away the camera app if it's invoked on the lock screen by swiping to the left. You have to lock the screen with the sleep slash wake button. And again, I experienced that with 16.2 as well. Paul said my 13 and 13 Pro Max are both on iOS 16.1, no bugs discovered and battery life is great. Sir Jacanta said, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, used to six or seven hours on my 12 Pro Max after 16.1, easily eight hours of screen on time with 85% battery health. That's pretty great. 16.1 on 12 mini. I'm experiencing way better battery life on the 12 mini, literally hours longer than before. Performance seems to be the same, just less bugs and glitches. And it finally got the percentage indicator too. Very good update. So that's everything with iOS 16.1 and 16.2 beta one, as well as iOS 15.7.1. If there's anything else I didn't mention as far as new features or anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper paper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.